this little river here is a perfect lazy river for inner tubing during the summertime. It's a part of the Embarrass River system. And uh, growing up, it was certainly a definite favorite spot to go swimming, especially underneath that bridge over there or underneath the one we'll be seeing in a, about two minutes. We got clams, sturgeon, and perch, bluegill, crappie, sunfish, and lake trout in here somewhere. The kids from uh, St. Martin's, because I used to be one, come here and do track and field practice. And this uh, pass, for their sake, seriously needs to be updated. Because it really, really hurts whenever you fall on it. Because of how bad the concrete's eroded. But it's been like that forever. park also extends to the other side of the river over here. And I'll take a short walk over there. This over here is where they take all the grass clippings and uh, people in town can also bring their compost and drop it off because it's a community compost bin and uh, gardening site that is across the river on the other side inside a fenced off area. But you can come down and 
grab the soil that's been freshly made after it's composted at any time and have free dirt for your potting necessities here at Olin Park. This park with the Historical Society used to host Native American events, Amish events, and Fireman's Festival, um, mountain men stuff, where vendors would come in and experience, and you could experience the history of uh, American made goods, and uh, freshly made arrowheads uh, right in front of you, and um, they used to do a Civil War reenactment inside this park uh, every single year around the 4th of July up until about 10 years ago or longer. I don't remember when they really stopped doing it, to be honest. But the Historical Society lost funding and interest in doing such sort of things with the community. It's one of those things that you kind of miss, but you kind of don't miss. And this swinging bridge used to be a lot more uh, swinging it, but they tightened it up so bad that these notches in the bridge were shriveled up right here you know, it's been a while since they changed the boards so they're full of wood splinters which isn't safe for dogs or children but it's a popular place to go clam hunting I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera Oh, I guess you will. All those little shiny white pieces down there are clam shells that may or may not have uh, edible meat or uh, pearls inside of them, but you can certainly come down here and snag a shell that has the same stuff that a pearl would have on it on the inside and uh, use it for different kind of um, artsy fartsy stuff because, well, the fish is already dead that was inside of it and this river will never cease to have any of that stuff inside of it down yonder over there underneath the bridge which I'll get to in a moment is the three foot um, swimming hole that nobody seems to know about anymore and it was also a popular site for all the bikes that were stolen in the middle of town to be dropped into. And this over here is the community garden. Of which is getting so much use. But, tis what it is. There used to be a big old dirt hill at the bottom of this over here that um, me, my brother Chris, Brandon all hands. Brady and Casey Wetzel and a bunch of other neighborhood kids used to come and jump about 20 to 30 feet in the air from this hill 
and at least 10 feet in here. It felt like 30. But they had to get rid of it because it became too popular. <laughs> uh, with this um, place back here, we would come down here or we built a trail which is now overgrown from up top of the hill up there down to this hill and over into the bike jump that was before that garden existed over there or that tree that they planted brand new looks like the apples on it are pretty well ripe And then back here, for those of you who enjoy the Caroline Horse Festival, you probably would like to know is this trail back here is an easement for riding horses through town safely and part of a disc golf course now My Aunt Leora would actually ride her horses when she had them through this part of town back in the day.
I'd have to say about 25 years ago. Twenty to twenty five years ago. A bit of recent good news is in the last four weeks I lost 20 pounds. I went from 348 to 328 thanks to a bit of summer sun and running around everywhere. This drainage channel here connects to one that's in the woods over there. darn bird. Now this is a perfect spot to run your horses for a mid-afternoon ride. There used to be a lot more horse activity in town up until Claiborne Farms took a dip into the unemployed area. I'm not exactly sure what happened with their farm exactly, but I worked with one of the girls that's related to them all the way in New London. And uh, 
It seems like no one was going to uh, continue the family business or something then. And that was about eight years ago or more. And every time I drive past it now, the white fences and the horse boarding areas or training grounds are completely overgrown and the paint's peeling from the fence and it just looks like it's completely run down. Under there is a popular hangout spot for uh, young kids who want to have a little bit of fun. And uh, where that tree is located under there, I'll get a closer look at it, is where the deeper swimming hole is for in town. There's a spot to avoid because it has an undertow and a little bit of a whirlpool in it. But other than that, it's completely safe. Might be a little different now that there's a giant tree in the middle of it, but what can you do? Uh, this is where you take your horse out of the little area here. Across the way is uh, four-wheel drive Seagrave Museum and worksite. Had a big implement during World War II was creating some of the first military vehicles and fire trucks that are in use to this day. Oh yeah. Oh, you can see some turtles up in there. Aha. They're all sunning themselves. A lot of different painted turtles and uh, snappers and shit down there. So maybe it might not be the best idea. But it's also a really good spot to go fishing. And it connects up with the other thing. I'm not doing this today, but Maybe sometime in the future, whenever I have the right gear on. Way back in those woods there is another popular uh, delinquent hangout for doing whatever the hell delinquents do. They're young, and I use that term lightly because ain't none of them back there doing anything bad except for probably getting stuck inside one of the tunnels. I dare not go into this part of the forest at all. That's behind these trees all along this road. Because there's stinging nettle all up and down this area here. And it's no fun whenever your egg, uh, legs are burning like that. Yeah. Oh, you got two squirrels over there. Try it. <laughs> Before they raise the walls on this, there's a nice little spot to go fishing too from the bridge. But obviously at your own risk with how much traffic comes through here.
If you like what you see, hit the like and subscribe for helping me out making more videos. And hopefully I can come back to the places that I'm chit-chatting a little bit too much through and uh, with a little bit better camera equipment in the future and do a silent walkthrough. But I got a lot of stuff to share. And yes, this path is extremely beautiful during August and September and October during harvest season because of the colors the maple trees turn. So In my opinion, inside some of these rocky areas along the river, they should be having flowers planted and maintained so that it'd be even more beautiful whenever you take a walk around town or if they would uh, get rid of the rock completely and replace it with a wall and a mural so that you know people that are walking and stuff like that don't fall into the drink especially if you lost to control your horse I weren't like a very experienced rider uh, those steep hills and stuff would not only kill you, but your horse. And uh, like things like this, like why, and uh, for chunks of random ass uh, concrete walkways that used to have a purpose for going across the river. Oh, there's a little turtle going in the water. If I'm not mistaken, memory banks working properly. There was something here associated with the Great Wall of China which is and uh, that looks like one of those rocks that they had in the 1930s for uh, building 
uh, certain um, things. Uh, I'll wrap it up with the Great Wall of China because you know, over here in Clintonville, we actually have a piece of the Great Wall sitting over in our historical village that's on the other side of the park. Which I'm sure will continue to be interesting before I get on with it. This is the baseball diamond that for 20 some odd years or from the mid 90s up until the late 2010s was barely in use because they had to refurbish it and put this nice little fence up too. And there's St. Mary's Parish in school at the top of the hill. Same goes for the one in New London. The baseball diamond they had in the park down there. The last time they used it was in the 1980s for a hair band concert. I forget which one it was, but there was a video on YouTube a long time ago that's been lost to the algorithm of which one it was. Someone uploaded their home video and uh, they were a famous band that came through one time and that was pretty much it up until the late 2010s when they reopened up the baseball diamond in Hatton Park over in New London. But that's not important for the day. That's new. Because they had to get money to re-renovate the, the baseball diamond. Now it holds football, baseball, and track and field events. This one holds the fireworks back here for the 4th of July. And here's the bridge that I keep talking about. This bridge right here has a turtle on it. And a little tree there. But where that turtle's sunning himself, everybody used to go swimming right off the end over here. And we used to climb down 
the middle of this down here and it's about three feet right here in front of the bridge where this little guy's staring at me <laughs> over here is about two feet deep and that bridge over there is where we threw a whole bunch of rocks and uh, wherever the locals would uh, throw bicycles that they would steal from people's front yards and they'd disappear for about a week and uh, the police and um, you yourself would actually find the bicycle floating in the river right there uh, underneath the bridge over there is uh, another uh, kiddo hangout that we used to enjoy as children um, because there's a lot of graffiti that's been either painted over or chipped off um, under there and uh, on underneath the bridge it used to be red now it's black uh, the bars on it and it's only been replaced once And it's a nice little echo chamber and there's a couple other spots up towards the dam that we would uh, enjoy. Before I go through the historical village, I'm going to show off the brand new skate park they got in town here, which is actually set inside the ice skating pond they used to use during winter a long time ago, like in the 1930s and before. It has never been in use in the entire 30 years that I've been around this community that I know of or remember, but let's just get over this thing here real quick. Because the little hut over here, that's the ice house for the skating rink has been closed off and open only once or twice for historical society um, thingy bobber so there's like mannequins and stuff inside of it uh, some sort of rendition of something I got pictures of it somewhere but whether my brother destroyed them by accident or lost them or somehow because of moving crap like that we barely oh yeah barely know where any of our old family photos are at and it's a shame because we used to have a lot of really nice um little family adventures that were uh, kind of like this not too anything special but not anything bad close for life yeah, skating rink
closed at 9 p.m. Park and Recreational Department. I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything in there. Oh, we got it covered up. On trash barrels and shit. <laughs> like the New London or Clintonville area, even though they're kind of uh, special communities as they hold a lot of convenience and history. Uh, everyone that lives here and works here and does stuff here in the present day does absolutely dick to preserve any of that history for tourism purposes that would probably generate more money. Um, that building, if you can see behind the black car there with the blue stripe on it, used to be the flower shop in town that was owned by a Chinese guy a long, long time ago. He was old then. Uh, his favorite thing to sell and my favorite thing to get uh, because he would always give them out for free was those Chinese yo-yos which is like rolled up paper on a stick uh, and you just throw up people and it would go like right in their face and then it would fucking retract <laughs> that, that was fun the guy was kind of like the unofficial party store And judging from how big those uh, bathrooms are and the green buildings over there and slash concession stand, um, baseball used to be a very big sport in the middle of Clintonville at one point in time. And judging from how that white building over there looks, um, it used to be a feed mill or a sawmill or some sort of mill because they don't they don't put the roof like that for nothing but it's now like businesses and apartments and some other stuff there's also a bakery that's been shut down on in that building actually Oh, I know what's in the building. It's a coffee shop. Uh, uh, the living room. The owner of that place just died. Right next door to it where those apartment buildings is. Uh, you see the balcony of. In front, there's a, a bakery that somebody needs to seriously start a baking business for fresh bread and donuts. And, uh all sorts of confectional treats in fact if uh anything like uncle mike's and appleton would have anything to say about it the crinkle with those fresh fruit um, pieces inside of it would uh really oh yeah they're playing down there already look at that <laughs> really really go well in a town of this size because the grocery store does a good job, but we need a professional baker in this place. And the park's been updated a couple times with new uh, playground equipment. Uh, God, if I know what the hell it used to be down in there. Other than the, the merry-go-round, the jungle gym uh, pyramid, and those two horses that are on springs are actually original equipment that the park has had forever. And uh, If you catch 
the American Legion post at the right time. They hold the cool little events down here, like steak fries and uh, certain other things. Um, they used to have, um, I don't know what event they used to have down here, to be honest, that we were kids at the time. Uh, my mom took me and my brother here and they had uh, like 10 foot tall pieces of bubble gum candy that you would tear off and you know share with everybody I forget where you get those things from but that was also one of the little special things that you'd get during the summer down here if you just walked up on the right day and you can get a whole 10 foot stick of bubble gum or at least a 5 foot stick of bubble gum but This is one of the tanks here. New London doesn't have a tank or an airplane, but Appleton inside the park over on College Avenue has an airplane, a warbird. And uh, Shawano has a tank uh, pointed at this traffic in the middle of the intersection that little kids like to climb up on all the time. And they got the door to this thing completely welded shut. And stuff like that. I'm assuming this used to be a toolbox or a seat. And God, you had to ride on that thing for a seat. Here is the historical four-wheel drive location that started Seagrave. It still has a couple of offices that are in use on the inside. And for those of us who are history buffs and like to read, I'll leave it there so you can pause it. Local tennis court. And it's starting to get a little overgrown. And if I went over there, there is a historical uh, refrigerator that the town used to have and uh, the As you can tell, I didn't really plan any of this out. I really wanted to take that loop around and showcase the trail, but I guess this is a neat little thing too. But this little building over here, it used to be the town's refrigerator way back in the day because refrigeration wasn't invented until God knows when. In the, middle of the 1900s somewhere. For personal use. But this right here, this whole concrete slab used to not be as overgrown as it is. And there are tons of stones and stuff inside here that at least back in my day and probably after someone gets a hairpin idea after watching this video um the well-known druggy kids and there's also a tree over there that had a 
little hole in the inside of it that people would drop stuff. And uh, they'd leave it up inside the, the tree nut or behind one of those rocks or underneath uh, what used to be um, capstones on these uh, rock pavilions over here. They used to have little pyramids on top of them, but they covered over with flat concrete. And there's another little band-aid fixed to it because there was a fist-sized hole in there. And it was a favorite little spot for the druggy kids. And though the kids in town won't probably snitch because they're going through high school yet, um, but whatever, I'm not part of any of that crap, so I don't have to worry about it. But yeah, they'd drop all their, um, paraphernalia up in those rocks and underneath the capstone that's been cemented over and, uh, some other little loose stones and stuff like that that were a part of those uh, historical monuments. So if you ever want to try finding some treasure, if you're into that kind of crap, uh, without having to, I mean, you can drive to Michigan now. So I mean, like no one has to really hide anything about anything these days. But maybe you might be lucky and find some decomposed plant material. But, yeah. Uh, but anyways, the cops are covered. They, they come from the local area of New London and Clintonville here. The younger cops that work, so. They don't have to worry about it because whenever they were children, uh, they were quite heavily into it anyways. And didn't have to worry about um, anything. And there's the machine shop. I've been holding on to the camera so long there's spiders are growing webs on it. A machine shop out of Zach Howe and stuff. Those used to be bell towers and have little bells on the inside of them for whatever reason. And then here is Pioneer Park. This is a log cabin that's a old residential house and the big white one used to be a schoolhouse of some kind. And every so often they open it up for whatever reason. Uh, remember those stones in the river earlier? These are our part of those uh, historical stones. They've been chipped away and just tossed from the river. Uh, I don't remember when in the summertime they opened this up, but it's uh, to the Historical Society's discretion. And, uh, yeah. And obviously the refurbishing stops. Huh. That could take a while.
Yeah, she used the Wall of China. We just got back from Athens. So, yeah. So, these are about a thousand years newer. Like, these are not that old compared to where you were. And there's no proof that these are real. Well, that's pretty much all she wrote for the um, thing. Oh, the uh, last thing, that building on the other side of the park down here, it is for rent if you need for park services or parties or um, some sort of other stuff like that. And that's a brand new building they put down there. You can hold it for weddings. My brother had his wedding there. And uh, they got grills up front that are big enough to have a huge party. Yeah, that's all in park, everybody. Some neat stuff. Come on down and enjoy for yourself. All the different things they have available. They have uh, fresh water over here. They can use for uh, anything. If your dog needs water or you're, they're coming through with the horse, so the horse needs water which they should have stanchions, but they don't for tying your horse onto. And it'd be nice because there's a lot of Amish activity around and they don't got anywhere to tie their horse onto so they don't run off. Somebody filled it up with sticks. All fresh water. <laughs>